The French Wars of Religion was a period of religious dispute and violence between French Catholics and Protestants. The wars began at the order of King Henry II. Henry hated Protestants, persecuted them severely. When he dies, his son takes over his place. While they appeared strong, Henry's son's real powers came from their mother, Catherine de' Medici. Our story begins in August of 1572, two years after the end of the Third War of Religion. To end the war, Charles IX signed the Peace of St. Germain in Lyon. Most Catholics were outraged that the king would resolve peace and did little to honor the treaty. Fast forward two years later, and Charles' sister Catherine is to wed Henry of Navarre, a leading Protestant. Again, the populace was outraged. Three days after their marriage, there was an assassination attempt on Admiral Gaspar de Kalingi, leader of the Protestant armies. While only injured, Charles IX agreed to investigate the attack. Later in private, his mother Catherine revealed that she ordered the assassination, and that the Protestants were planning to rebel and needed to be crushed. Naturally, Charles agreed, because mother knows best, am I right? Charles then ordered his Swiss guards to eliminate a list of Protestant leaders, headed by Kalingi. Soon after, panic spread throughout the streets of Paris, and the Catholic populace took to arms, slaughtering thousands of Protestants. In the end, an estimated 7,000 Protestants were killed in Paris, and approximately 70,000 across France. Across the world, the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre was met with mixed reactions. Many Catholic leaders like Pope Gregory XIII and Philip II of Spain were overjoyed with the slaughter of Protestants, while those loyal to France were horrified. That being said, the massacre spawned a movement across France where many Protestants were killed and the public opinion on Protestants worsened. That all changed, however, with the War of the Three Henrys. The War of the Three Henrys was the eighth conflict of the French Wars of Religion and finally ended in 1589 with the death of Henry III of France. In the battle of this terrible war, Henry of Navarre indeed came out on top. In this three-way fought war, each Henry wanted the throne and was backed by some type of party. Henry of Navarre was backed by the Protestants. Henry III of France was backed by the politicians. And Henry of Guy was backed by the Catholics. In the beginning, the favorite was Henry of Guy, because not only was he the leader of the Catholic League, but he was also backed by Philip II. Henry of Navarre was the underdog, because he was backed by the Huguenots, but had a few tricks up his sleeve. Elizabeth of England, a huge powerhouse, was behind Henry of Navarre. In the first battle between the Huguenots and Catholics, Henry of Guy was quickly killed. Then, with little help from a monk, Henry III of France was assassinated. Henry of Navarre came into the war as the underdog, but ended the everlong question of who was the greatest Henry. With the ending of the war, Henry Navarre will quickly become Henry IV and later turns into a devout Catholic. Henry then goes on to become one of the greatest kings in France's history, leading them into the Golden Age. Here we have Henry IV of France, also known as Henry of Navarre. Now, tell us a little about yourself. Well, I was born December 14, 1553, in a little town called Bern. My father's name was Antoine de Bourbon, and he was the Duke of Vendôme. My mother, on the other hand, was Gianni de Abret and she was the Queen of Navarre. This is how I obtained the throne of Navarre. I married Marguerite de Valois on August 17, 1572. This was a marriage set up by her mother. I know this is the marriage that caused the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, but I did not want any of that to happen. I am clearly a supporter of the Huguenots, and every day I look back to regret that day. I barely managed to escape my life by renouncing my Calvinist faith and becoming a prisoner. Escaping was not an easy process either, if I must say. Why did you decide to marry Marguerite of Valois? Her mother was the one who arranged this marriage as she wanted her to be the Queen of Navarre. How were you able to obtain the throne of France? I knew I had a very big chance of the throne after the Battle of Coutras when I defeated Henry III and his army. Then the Spanish tried to interfere with French successes, so me and Henry III teamed up and fought them. Henry was stabbed, which only left me. He declared me his successor the day before he died. Clearly, it was a lot of work. Whatever happened with Henry of Guy? He was out of the picture very early when he planned to assassinate the king. The king was quicker, though, because he had his guards kill Henry of Guy as soon as the assassination was found out. How would you consider yourself today? Today, I would consider myself the best leader on the planet. I mean, I did end the long war of Spain and brought religious peace in France. The nobility literally loved me because of my military successes in dashing manner. I made sure there was a chicken in every pot in order to make my people not hungry. Obviously, my reign will forever be remembered as great.